I've grown up in a time and a place where if someone says viral, it's more likely that they're talking about an internet video than an actual infection. And yet having watched so many, I don't really know what makes a video so shareable that everyone is talking about it. So in the past couple of weeks, I've spent a silly amount of time re-watching the top videos from the past decade, looking for patterns to see if I can figure out some kind of formula. So join me as we overanalyze these videos to see what we can learn from them. Let's start simple. Here's a pool of 100 viral videos dating from 2006 to 2017. They all have more than 4 million views on YouTube alone, one of them almost 3 billion. Out of the 100, there were 24 videos I'd describe as shocking or surprising. For example, this guy blending a brand new iPhone, or the kids who interrupted this BBC interview. 30% could be described as impressive, like these trick shots from Dude Perfect, or OK Go's music videos that clearly take a huge amount of time and effort to make. Only 14% of them had the cute element, and it's usually kids. <laughs> 17 were just plain weird, wacky, cringy, etc. But by far the most common was humour. About 50% of them were comedic in some way. A few other notable stats, the average video length from my sample was 4 minutes and 10 seconds, the longer ones being much more recent, and only 12% didn't clearly show humans or animals. Okay, now that's enough statistics, clearly we need to look closer. Because the videos that go viral usually aren't the highest quality or most artistic videos. Most of the time it doesn't actually matter how much effort went in, but they all have this quality that makes thousands and thousands of people find a friend and say, hey, you've got to watch this. And even if they're sharing it to say, look how hilariously bad this is, it still counts. So let's try and work out why someone might want to share some of these videos. Susan Boyle. Here, someone who doesn't look how we expect singers to look ends up shocking everyone by singing impressively. Don't judge a book by its cover. Charlie bit my finger. It's relatable, it's quotable, it's got the cute factor, and the mischief of this little guy is pretty funny. And then there's evolution of dance, which is impressive how many genres he can switch between, and there's some humour, but I reckon mostly this one is nostalgic because he covers about 50 years of music, so there really is something for everyone. Now obviously we could come up with theories like that all day long and it's kind of useless, unless we can reverse engineer these ideas. So let's say we're making a snowboarding video, and we're going to film someone doing some jumps. Would that be funny? Nope. Would that be cute? No. Would that be shocking? Not really. And is it impressive? Only a tiny bit. I struggle to imagine lots of people watching a video of a guy doing some snowboard jumps and then rushing to their friends to tell them all about it. So what could we do to change that? The most obvious might be if the snowboarder did some mind-blowing, world-class tricks. That could go viral, but they'd need to be really, really impressive. It's probably easier if we think outside the box. We could try the cute factor. What if it was a little kid on the snowboard? That could be both cute and impressive. Or what if it could be shocking, like someone gets hurt really badly, but they just keep going. Now, each one of those has a bit more potential than just filming ordinary snowboarding, but none of them are easy to film. They sound complex, time consuming, dangerous, or expensive. So instead, what if we tried a different kind of shocking? Why not try snowboarding in a really surprising place? Instead of down mountains, we could film someone snowboarding down the streets of a city. And of course, that's exactly what happened in January 2016. Casey Neistat snowboarded behind a Jeep driving through New York. He didn't need to do any world-class snowboarding or break any bones for it to go viral because the idea of snowboarding through the middle of the street is novel enough. So the concept was solid, but of course, that's only the very beginning. They had to work out the logistics of filming it and get the video online as soon as possible while the snow in New York was still a hot topic. I believe they did the whole process from start to finish in 24 hours. Now, if Casey was a less confident snowboarder, the video wouldn't have been as good. If they'd edited it differently or chosen a different piece of music, it might not have had as much energy. And crucially, if they hadn't established in the beginning that the roads were closed, it wouldn't have been so rebellious. If you're just a civilian out driving, you are subject to arrest. It's as simple as that. 
And so let's just imagine that after watching that, I went out and filmed my original idea of filming some regular snowboarding jumps, and then I added some music to it and uploaded it. I'd be crazy to expect it to go viral. But really, it's pretty delusional to expect anything to go viral. Even Casey Neistat and other people who have had loads of viral hits, they all say that it's incredibly unpredictable. I know that in my time on YouTube, I've been constantly reminded of just how bad I am at guessing what will and won't be popular. So I almost feel like it's a waste of time to research into the latest trends. Maybe the most efficient way to go viral would be to shoot pranks or to try and fake one of those home videos. And I don't know about you, but that's not what I want to make. I'd like to get to the point where I don't even care about virality and where I'm just entirely focused on making stuff that I would want to watch. And in a way that's kind of freeing because it means that we're in charge instead of desperately trying to find the formula for viral success. It means that we're focusing on what we're doing rather than just desperately hoping that everyone else will help share our video and get it to work. So that's my cliche conclusion really, that there is no formula and that we shouldn't care about what other people think and instead just focus on making the best stuff that we can. And if we do that and it happens to go viral, then great, we'll, we'll enjoy it while it lasts because one thing's for sure, the hype does not last long. My name's Simon Cade, it's been DSLR Guide and I'll see you next week.